I'm Bob Roskowski. I'm a conceptual designer for Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company. My artistic training has helped me tremendously uh, be able to uh, quickly and efficiently communicate ideas, my design ideas, to other people, uh, to show them the vision of the same vision I have, and to be able to get them to uh, understand it. This aircraft is called the Submarine Launched and Recovered Multipurpose Unmanned Air Vehicle, or MPUAV. It's also been called the Cormoran, which is a diving seabird. As a result of the START II missile treaty, the Navy was faced with having to either retire or do something else with four of their 18 ballistic missile submarines. And the Navy came to us for uh, our concepts for a wide range of unmanned aircraft that could operate from aircraft carriers or surface ships or even submarines. This idea was unique in that it was the first time someone had thought about the idea of launching and recovering the vehicle while the submarine was still submerged. This UAV concept incorporates a turbofan jet engine and uh, uses that engine uh, like any other aircraft, except that during the launch and recovery phases of the operation, uh, the inlet for that engine, the nozzle have to be closed off because engines typically don't like to be submerged. The submarines that we designed uh, this concept to go aboard were the Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines, which offers a tremendous amount of volume to integrate uh, both the UAV and its servicing systems. When the submarine releases this vehicle, it goes to the surface like a cork. When it reaches the surface, two rocket boosters light off and blast this aircraft into the sky. And during that time, the jet engine started and after the rocket boosters burn out, they're dropped off, and the aircraft flies off and does its mission. The aircraft uses its stealth and mission planning to penetrate hostile airspace. And once it's in there, it can do a variety of missions. Uh, it could be collecting intelligence and reconnaissance on weapons of mass destruction sites. Uh, it could be supporting special operations forces. But whatever it's doing, it's using its stealth, its mission planning, to avoid detection. When the aircraft comes back, the jet engine has to be shut down, the inlet and nozzle door have to be closed, and the aircraft splashes down and waits for the submarine to come and get it. Then the submarine has to deploy a remotely operated vehicle which takes a cable from the submarine and attaches it to a cable that's dropped from the aircraft. And once those two cables are connected, the ROV can go back to the submarine and the aircraft can be reeled down, pulled down to the submarine like a kite. Our team was very diverse and included aerospace engineers, naval architects, marine engineers, uh, Navy divers, uh, people that support naval operations ashore, and you know, all of us had to come together and, and, and to, to do this something that had never been done before. And you know, it, it also was a great example of horizontal integration across the corporation. We were able to draw upon expertise from, from all kinds of areas, and, you know, including uh, the hydrodynamic testing aspects, the ROV operations, and, and just having them aboard. Was, was such a great asset, and, and I think that it's, it's a, a unique attribute of Lockheed Martin.